Hi guys and welcome back to uh, the second part of our Photoshop tutorial with the title Working with Selections. So I'm going to show you what kind of tools that we can use to select certain parts of our image, uh, different methods and how we work with them. So let's start uh, by opening any image that you have. So I'm going to open a very simple image here just to show you how we deal with selections. And the first tool that we're going to use is the so-called rectangular marquee tool. It's the second tool from the top, rectangular marquee tool, and um, it has the keyboard shortcut M. You can see the shortcut M, and it allows you to select rectangular areas on your picture. So whenever I draw a rectangular picture, I select certain pixels that are inside my rectangle. So I draw a line and right there at the line, when I, uh, when I zoom in to the selection, you can see that there is one pixel is still inside the selection and the next, the neighbor, is already outside the selection. So in the, with this selection, you are selecting only the uh, pixels that are inside the uh, selections. This rectangular marquee tool can be uh, drawn in any uh, in any shape in any size, and um, you can also uh, add more than one rectangle by using the uh, the shift key. When you hold down your shift key, it will add to your current selection. So now all those pixels inside those rectangles are selected. And you could do something with it, copy, paste, delete it, and so on and so on. Uh, so with shift, you can add to your selection. When you can, uh, when you can also add something here to this selection and um, enlarge it. When you can add something to select to your selection, you can also uh, re sorry, I clicked the wrong key, I clicked the wrong key. You can also remove something from your selection with the Alt key. The Alt key on the Mac keyboard is somewhere else. So the Alt key. With the Alt key, you can remove something from the current selection. So I remove these parts, and now they are not inside. Again, with Shift, you can add to it. With Alt, you can remove from your selection. Always make sure you hit one of the buttons, because if you forget to click something, then you, uh, you'll end up with, uh, with a new selection. Uh, what did I just do to get the old one back? I just use Control C for undo, edit, undo. So that is uh, the rectangular marquee tool that you can add and uh, and subtract from your from your selection. Uh, now I already mentioned it in the first um, the first lesson. By the way, if you want to see the first lesson before where we talked about the user interface, I'm gonna link it to you up there on the bottom, on the top right. Uh, in the, uh, I already mentioned that the Photoshop has these rulers next to the image. The rulers are right now in my version turned off. Uh, the keyboard shortcut was Control R or View and turn on the rulers. And whenever the rulers are turned on, you can uh, move your mouse on top of one, for example, the horizontal ruler here, and you can drag out a guideline. Once again, you move your mouse onto the ruler and you drag out a, gu a guideline and place it anywhere on your image. These guidelines can now also be used together with the rectangular marquee tool because the guidelines will, uh, the, the, the selection will snap to those guidelines. But first, before we do something else, we want to get rid of the old selection. To get rid of the selection, we have the deselect. Uh, command the deselect can be either done with select and deselect, but that is a shortcut that you should remember for sure because you will need it a lot. That's Control D, D as in deselect. So to, to if you have something selected, Control D removes the selection. So here it is, and Control D removes the selection. What I wanted to show you is the guidelines. When you draw a selection, you will notice that the selection snaps to the guidelines. So when you need a couple, when you need a couple selections that all like end up on the same height. Oh, I messed it up here. Uh, all at the same height, 
then you use a guideline and then they all snap to those lines. Uh, the, the, the selection rectangles also snap to the, uh, snap to the document edges and they also snap to, um, usually they also snap to the center of an image, so the, where, where, it's, where, it's, where the, the center is of the picture. Um, okay, so that would be the guideline. So here's a guideline that you can pull out from the vertical ruler, one guideline, another guideline. The guidelines, by the way, also snap. Um, when you pull them out, they snap to a selection and then you create a new selection and in both directions they snap. Those guidelines, uh, you can keep them in your drawing. If they annoy you, you can always turn them off, like make them invisible with view and um, uh, clear guides, you can just delete them. Let me undo it. Or when you are still in uh, move, you can always move them to a different location. When you don't want to move them, you can lock them, view lock guides. So when they are locked, they cannot be deleted and cannot be moved. And um, yeah, and clear, then they're all gone. Okay, so much for the guides and how to use them, how to move them and to snap onto them. Uh, I'm gonna deselect here and I'm also gonna turn off the rulers. I'm gonna turn them only on when I need some new guidelines. So that was the rectangular marquee tool. And I mentioned it already that every tool not only has the tool that is visible here in the toolbar, but you can also hold your mouse on it. And below it, there are additional tools. Not every tool has some additional tools, only the ones that have a little rectangle there. It's almost every one. So when you hold down, for example, the rectangular marquee tool, you also get uh, the elliptic, elliptical marquee tool that allows you to make elliptical selections. So either as an ellipse, uh, as it is right now, or when you hold your shift key, it is a perfect circle. So any elliptic shape by dragging the uh, the, rec the, the rectangle around it, or when you hold the shift key while you drag it, it will be a perfect rectangle. Uh, with one difference to the rectangular marquee tool, because now when you take a look, um, uh, when you zoom in to your selection, again, there is every pixel is either inside the selection or it's outside of the selection, but uh, in order to get rid of the stair effect that you get now because you now have diagonal lines. You're not only selecting rectangles, you have diagonal lines. You also uh, will get partly selected uh, pixels. For example, if there's a pixel, this one, and you would fill it black or something like this. And uh, let me quickly show you that. I am uh, I'm going to fill it black. You will notice that not only the pixels inside get filled, but also some of the outside get partly filled. That is called anti-aliasing, aliasing, anti-aliasing, anti however, to pronounce that. So to get rid of the stare effect um, that uh, we get when we have diagonal lines. So every selection that you draw and that is not parallel to the pixels, like diagonal or round and so on, uh, will have this effect. Uh, if I do a rectangle, if I do a rectangle selection, so here's a small one, and I fill the rectangular selection in black, I only fill certain pixels, and the right next one will not be filled. Okay, can you see the difference? That is when you stay rectangular, and this is when you go diagonal or any other shape. Uh, let me uh, get rid of this. So, uh, let's zoom back out again to the whole picture. So that was the rectangular marquee tool and the elliptic marquee tool. Of course, you can combine both. There's also two more that I hardly ever use, and that means you can use them to select one single row of pixels. Um, I usually do that in a different way or hardly ever need it. Now, the next thing is um, when you... Um, let's do one more thing, and that is the polygon lasso. Right below the uh, the... The rectangular marquee tool is the polygon lasso, and there's three different ones. Uh, the first one, the lasso tool, uh, in my opinion, 
uh, really hard to control when you're working with a mouse. I'm working with a mouse here. I don't have a, a sketch pad or something. When you work with a mouse, it is really hard to select something specific with the polygon lasso because it is really, it follows and you know how mouse movements look like. You can see it's a really ugly selection. I would rather use the different tools to get a nice and smooth selection there. Um, that's why I hardly ever use the the, the lasso tool, but what I do is I use the polygon lasso tool. And the polygon lasso tool is basically a lasso that is made out of straight lines. Uh, you can, especially in architecture or when you select something with hard edges, it is a wonderful tool to select something. For example, I would like to select the roof of the building. I would do that in 100%, so I would zoom in. Sometimes I do the selection even in uh, 200% uh, to see every detail and now I would go in here with the polygon lasso and I'm just selecting the roof. Let's assume it is, uh, has a straight edge, edge. So I'm gonna, yeah, let's select also this part here. See, uh, it's quite uh, fast to do a quick selection. It's probably not a straight roof. To do a selection of the roof. Okay, so here's the roof only. Uh, the polygon lasso has um, a, few th a few things. When you start selecting something, like mountains here, and you accidentally make a wrong click with backspace on your keyboard, you can go one step back and then start to continue. When you draw the polygon lasso while holding the shift key, it will snap to 90 degrees angles or also 45 degrees. So you can do uh, 45 degree selections with holding the shift key. The last one, by the way, don't try to close it. Uh, just make a click, make a double click for your last uh, 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 vertex and then you, uh, it will automatically be closed and turned. When it's blinking, then it's an active selection. Okay, that is the polygon lasso tool uh, quite handy. There's also a third one under here that's the selection tool and that is the magnetic lasso. I'm not a big fan of it because it is uh, more or less a combination of the two with, the, with an additional uh, snapping function to uh, some elements. So the magnetic lasso uh, kind of, see, when you move it, it follows the, the background and not, the, not the background, of course. It follows wherever there is some contrast or some edge to find, but not really, uh, uh, really precise. But see, it follows here. It works really well if there is a hard an edge with a hard contrast. Then the polygon lasso works kind of well. But I'll show you later on some other selections tools that I usually prefer uh, for doing something like this. Okay. So my default here would be the polygon lasso tool that I use uh, quite a lot. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's have a look at uh, once more in little detail, uh, if you have a selection, let's use the polygon lasso tool and select something here in my sky, only a little piece. If you have a selection, we already know the shortcuts for turning the selection, uh, for getting rid of the selection is deselect or control D. All the other things, you don't need to know the shortcuts. You can also select all. That means the whole image is selected. Control A, just like in any other Windows program, select all, Control A. Here is deselect, Control D to turn off the, the selection. Select inverse, that is also sometimes important. When you have an image, um, and right now only the pixels inside the selection are selected. When you go for select inverse, now, all other pixels are selected except those. So now those are not in the selection, but everything else is. Of course, if you do select inverse two times, you are back to the same uh, selected pixels as before. Then let me zoom in. The selection here can also be uh, changed a little bit. Uh, the most common ones would be uh, select and modify. Uh, you can... Um, expand it, like make it larger, expand it, let's say make it larger by, so that we see something by 10 pixels. So now there will be a parallel offset uh, 10 pixels. Let's w watch it. 
Oh, now it's 10 pixels larger. Of course, when you, uh, when you m make it larger, expand it by 10 pixels, you will get round corners because before that it was a sharp corner and now it's a more or less round corner. On the other hand, um, you can also make it smaller. That would, be, uh, that would be contract. Same thing. Let's make it smaller by 10 pixels. And now we have, have the smaller selection again. Also, there is select modify border. So instead of having one selection that goes all around, let's go for 10 pixels again. Uh, I'm going to create a border. That means two selections and now only the areas between the two selections are selected. Okay, with border and so on. You can check what the others are. You can smooth it off. You can uh, and, and so on. You can feather it out um, a little bit like this. So there's all kinds of things here under select, uh, feather and uh, expand and smooth it off the corners and so on and so on. Okay, so that is um, how you change an already existing selection. It doesn't matter how you created your selection. Was it a pol was it a, a rectangular marquee or was it a polygon lasso or you, was it any other that we later on see? You can always invert it. You can always grow it, shrink it, feather it, smooth it out and so on. Okay, the next tool and it's already uh, showing up here. I don't know why as a suggestion. No, uh, before we do that, let's do another one first. Let's do, let's go for the magic wand tool. The magic wand tool, and we're gonna use that. Uh, it's not the most ideal picture here, but the magic wand tool, let's zoom in on one of those uh, uh, parts of the building here. Uh, the magic wand tool, it is, um, it's right there. Uh, now the, de the default is object selection tool, but there's hardly, uh, it only works in very specific cases, so that's why we do it a little bit later. Magic went tool. Magic went tool means um, when you click at a certain point, let's do this here in this green area. Uh, when I click on it, it, ought, it looks like it finds all the other green neighbors. That's what it does. So when you click at a certain point, let's say I click here on this stone and it finds all the other stones with the same or an equal uh, or an almost equal color. And that is there is a uh, there is a tolerance and the tolerance right now of 32. So if you match if you imagine all the possible colors lined up and you pick one very specific green then all the 32 neighbors of almost the same green will be selected. But you see that this green over here is not select selected because it only selects neighbors. So as soon as there is one neighbor that is not green anymore or similar green anymore, it will stop the selection. So that is quite a good tool for selecting this piece here. There was one part that is not uh, was also selected. So the smaller the tolerance is, uh, the the less greens are selected. So if I take the tolerance, 32 is a quite good value between 20 and 40 um, uh, are always used. So let's go for 10. That means no selection. Sorry, 10. Uh, when I now click, you can see that it, it was a JPEG before, so you get all these JPEG compressions here. Uh, it is not selecting so many because it only selects neighbors and soon as one neighbor is more than 10 shades of green away from my selected pixel, it will not select it. Okay, or also here the brown stone with a tolerance of 10 it will not select the whole stone, only parts of it. So that's why the 32 is quite a good value. If I go for something weird like 100 and I click the green here, you will notice that it not only selects the green, but it also goes in here because there are so many colors that are 100. So that is already a really huge, um, a really huge um, uh, color range of 100 different colors or neighboring colors. That, that's why we have uh, almost all of them. So the 32 that we had here was quite a good, uh, was quite a good uh, uh, range to, to, to use the magic wand tool. So that is something uh, what we can use it for or as we saw here, 
for the stones, of course, with the magic wand tool and the shift tool. You can also select more than one stone. Uh, if you click often, then you get more, more grays here and so on. It's working at the green, it's working at the green door, or at least parts of the green door. With shift, you can add something to your selection and so on. So that is, um, that is something that um, works quite well for areas with the same color as long as they touch each other. The, the, the sky in this case is not blue enough to use uh, this on the sky because it is, uh, you see, it might work to select the whole sky, uh, but it is bluish, white and so on. So the magic wand tool might work here on the white, but you have to do it again with shift on the blue areas and maybe also here, and now we almost get almost all the sky, but you don't get all those um, semi-transparent edges of the tree, so that's why it will be a very sloppy selection if you want to do something with it. Okay, that's the magic wand tool and its tolerance. Um, the uh, other tool that was right here, which works similar, is the quick selection tool, but sometimes it is, as it says, a little bit faster than the magic wand tool. But the, the, the algorithm or the, the, the method is almost the same. If I, let's say I want to select the whole green door. When I use the quick selection tool, uh, first of all, I not, not, I'm not picking one single pixel, but I'm picking more by using a brush and you also use it by brushing over it and it will see quickly select the whole thing. So it looks what kind of pixels are there and then looking what at what do the neighbors look like and do, do they have the same colors and it quickly selects them. So uh, let's try it uh, with something else. Uh, let's try it with the roof. That is something for quick selection tool. So you go for quick selection and you paint over, keep your mouse on it and paint over the roof and here's everything selected. If you don't want the, 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 the PV panels here, uh, you can also use Alt to subtract something with the quick selection tool. I'm not going to do it very precise. Also here I selected something I don't want, so Alt and paint over the area I don't want, the green ones. Also, um, the smaller the brush is, the smaller the neighbors and the, the, the neighboring areas, the larger it is, the more, it's, the more it selects, okay? It is quite a fast way to select something, but it works only well if, there's, if there are nice edges and so on. But you will uh, see some other methods soon. So it's always a combination of all the, of those uh, selection values. So that was the quick selection tool. The last one that is here in the list is now the default and it's the object selection tool and you can see it as soon as you have something like this little uh, this little coffee mug here um, something that is an object so it is all in a similar brightness in a similar color range and it also it sticks out from the background so the background has to be a different color um, you can simply drag a rectangle and photoshop finds the object for you uh, that will not work here in my in my old house but let me quickly open another picture that I just took, uh, this one. It's a, uh, it's a cat that I 3D printed, flexi cat. Uh, and you can tell right away it has all the same color and it, it is very different from its background. So that should be the perfect tool to use the object, uh, object selection. So all you need to do is choose the object selection tool and draw a rectangle that contains the whole object. So Make sure the whole cat is in it and only the cat and not much more. And then, ta da, there it is. It automatically finds the edges of your object. Not very precise, but we can always refine that. So, where are the areas where it was not that precise? So, here's one, for example, you can see that there's areas between. Uh, between those uh, ribs or whatever those parts of the skeleton are. Um, if you want those to be, to be more precise, I would now remember everything the cat is selected, not the inside. So I need to select, so subtract something from the selection and the best way to do it, because it has hard edges, to do it with the polygon lasso tool. Remember to hold the Alt key and now you subtract something from the selection. So now you refine it uh, wherever it's needed. So here it's really 
uh, in details. See, I refined it. Or maybe something here that uh, didn't find it with Alt. I'm going to subtract something. And uh, so there is something else there on the paw. It also caught some of the shadows. So with Alt, you can also remove, easily remove that. Okay, so I'm not going to spend much more, but the rest actually looks quite okay. Here is one more thing. So, select it. Here is some shadow. Oh, nah. sorry. So, and the feet, the back, the tail. Yeah, I'm not going to. One more, huh? So, alt click. So, and the rest is fine. So, here is my selection, and I can do something with the cat. Copy it and bring it into another document, or use it later on for changing its color, and so on. Um, that brings us already to one piece that I thought I'll do it at the end. If you spend a lot of time, and this is already quite a lot that I spent selecting the cat here, if you spend a lot of time selecting something, yeah, it's not that precise, um, you maybe want to keep the selection. I don't want to hit deselect and then my, all my work is gone. I want to keep my selection, maybe later on I come back to a selection that has the full cat in it. That's why we have a, a function here under select and you will find, oops, sorry, select and save selection. So. Uh, go to save selection and I'm going to call it, it's a new selection and I'm going to call it uh, all the cat. Okay, so now if um, I accidentally remove my selection or not accidentally, I hit control D for undo, uh, for, uh, for deselect and now I do something else, you know, like, uh, I don't know what, using a, uh, using a paintbrush to draw something on it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and so on, meow. So then uh, I want to get back to my selection. And that's simple because I just go to select. And as soon as there is one selection saved in your picture, you can go to load selection. It asks you which one. So here's the list of all the selections that you have stored. I want to uh, get back all the cat. Okay. And there it is. Okay, and then I can do later on something with it, but that is, uh, that is something that we're going to uh, spend much more time later on. For example, I can uh, turn the, uh, I don't know what, turn the cat uh, uh, pur uh, purple. So, something like this, from black to purple cat. Okay, so that will be a simple selection, the object selection tool. Um, Okay, so much for that. I'm not going to store that. And um, I got one more thing to do. And that is, um, so before that, we had polygon lassos or um, we had a rectangle selection. So there was always a selection where we had either inside or outside the selection. Okay, at the borders. We found out when there is a selection that is diagonal, then um, it might have some partly selected areas that are uh, in order to get the uh, get the stair effect uh, to minimize the stair effect but the, the next selection I'm going to show you is one where it not selects every pixel with the same uh, amount so it can also partly select something and that is a uh, so-called color select so you color select something there's not much color in this picture but nevertheless I'm going to try it color select. So um, uh, here it is, select color range. So when you select the color range, select color range, it is almost like the, uh, the magic wand tool, but the magic wand tool only selected neighboring colors, which are the same. Now when I pick a color, it selects all the same colors in the picture. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit, or I'm going to uh, here's my color picker and I'm going to pick a green color of my door. So I'm going to click a green color of my door and here I get a preview how many pixels have been selected. The white ones 
have been fully selected and if there is partly then they have been partly selected here is the fuzziness the fuzziness is the same as before we had the range how many greens will be selected so if i make the fuzziness larger you can see that more of similar greens because this green here is almost it's not the same but it's similar to this one the, the, the more the larger i make it the more green pixels will be selected the smaller i make it the only the precisely same pixels will be selected let me zoom in to those uh, doors because the uh, the doors and uh, and the window the blinds are almost the same color so here again uh, select color range and i want to pick one of those colors and here it is here it shows me um, a little preview around 40 when i now hit ok you can see here are my uh, green selected so the the fuzziness was not big enough to select all those dark greens so that is not the the tool for selecting those but be aware that also some that are a little bit the same or see over here for example they also have been selected and I am sure that it, there are some pixels somewhere in the forest that have also been selected because they have a similar green uh, to this one. Okay, it's not that much. I should have made the, I should have made the, the range larger. So uh, by doing that, um, you can also select more than one color because when you go, let me uh, uh, deselect first. Now, if I go to select color range, oops, sorry, color range, and I pick this green and then I hold my shift key which you can also use this plus here but a shift key makes a plus out of it plus this green plus the dark green plus maybe this green over here then you see it will select those three greens but it will also select a lot of the foreground colors so in this case that's not the right tool for this because we have so many green pixels here somewhere uh, that is not the right tool to select something but in this case maybe the blue would work so if I go for a color range select color range and uh, I pick a blue here shift this maybe shift this maybe shift this if I pick all the whites I already run in trouble uh, because I will select the house already but that would be something I may, can make the fuzziness even bigger. If I now hit select, I have the sky nicely selected, but I also have a lot of, uh, a lot of those dandelion uh, uh, flower, uh, flowers selected. So um, I have the, 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 the sky is nicely selected, but all the rest too. So I could come in with any other tool and just deselect parts of it. So I say, I am use Alt and I'm going to deselect everything else here. There was something over here. Let me uh, zoom out even more. So I, while I use the selection tool to filter the whites and blues, I now take away the things where there is no, no sky for sure. So just roughly or maybe use the polygon lasso. And now I have a selection that kind of nicely shows, uh, uh, holds the sky with all those details. See because they all are now selected. So it's always a combination what kind of tools you use. The color selection or maybe the object selection if it's a nice picture. The magic wand if it's a one small detail in a picture. The polygon lasso if you more or less want to draw something uh, in, in your picture. Or if it's a simple graphic element it might also be the rectangular marquee tool or the, uh, the, 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 the elliptic marquee tool. Okay, that was a brief overview of some of the most common selection tools. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for your attention. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.